Ender from our co host. So, Shamji, are you the co host today? Bhai, bhai, radhe, radhe. Yes, I am the co host. Okay. Bhai. Over to you, Rahul Bhai, please. Thank you. Uh, All right. Thank you, uh, Shamji. Radhe, Radhe, good morning, good evening, everybody. Welcome again to our daily wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. Let's get started. Uh, we will continue on our journey on chapter two, the recap that we are doing for the benefit of all the new participants. Uh, as we go deeper into today's topic, today we have a hard stop at 10. So we'll try to peruse through the stuff a little quickly. So let me share my screen and invoke the blessing of God and Guru. Get inspiration from them and take their support uh, before starting the session like we always do. <clears throat> So let me get started. All right, we'll do the opening prayers. Get underway. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwar Ha, Guru Sakshat Para Brahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha. Vasudev Sutam Devam Kamsachanur Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagadgurum Krishnam Vande Jagadgurum All right. So Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening once again. All of you. So let's get started. Today we are going to do 2.68 as part of our recap journey. I'm going to recite it and then we will get underway. What we are going to talk about is um, the false promise that we all need to be cautious about. And ironically, this is a promise we all make to each other, either by implying it or by assuming it. Okay, so we'll talk about it later later today. So let's get started with our shloka. I'm going to recite it and then you are welcome to follow along. Tasma Dyasya Mahabaho Nigrahitani Sarvashaha Indriyan Indriyarthe all right, so we have volunteers who want to go today. Maybe we'll pick up a few hands today, given the time constraint that we have. Okay, so bye. Samji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Tasma Jesya Mahabaho Nigrahitani Sarvashaha Indriyan Indriyar Debya Stasya Pregna Pratistita. Very nice, Samji. Radhe Radhe. <laughs> Sandhya, Radhe Radhe. Tasma Dyasya Mahabaho Negrihitani Sarvashaha Indriyan Indriyarthi Bhyo Tasya Pragya Pratishtita. Very nice, thank you. All right. Udit Mazu, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Tasmad Yesya Mahabaho Nigrihitani Sarvashaha Indriyan Indriya Tebyas Tasya Pregna Pratishtita Radhe Radhe. Sudaji Radhe Radhe. Kirpaji Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Kirpaji. Tasmad Yesya Mahabaho Nigrihitani Sarvashaha Indriyan Indriya Tibya Tasya Pragya Pratistita. Very nice, Kripa. Shri Ramme, I see you with the little one. Very nice. Please visit your nephew. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Yeah, nephew. That's Radhe, my... Radhe. What's your name? Swadra. 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 All right. Welcome, Swadra, to the session. Tasmat Tasmat Yasya Yasya Mahabaho Mahabaho Nigri Nigri Hitani Nigri Hitani Sarvashaha Sarvashaha Indriyani 
राधे राधे नितिन जी राधा राधे श्याम जी अंद्र राधे राधे एवरी वन महाबाह निगृहता निगृतानीशिया महाबाह इंद्रिया प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता महाबाहो दिगृहता तस्मा महाबाहो निगृहता So let's get started. So Lord Krishna, in previous uh, shloka, we we spoke about the senses, right? How we are uh, endowed with five senses, and one sense is good enough to make make a mockery of our spiritual journey, right? That is how the powerful our senses are. Now you'll have to give me just about a second. I'm trying to set up something real quick. And all right, I'm all set now. So. now in the this shloka lord krishna is further more going on to say that he says therefore who has restrained the senses from their objects o mighty armed arjun is firmly established in transcendental knowledge so this whole game is to restrain our senses right that kathopanishad analogy of chariot is there as well so that is there now our senses of course they have lot of battles on their head right so let's quickly look at what we are going to discuss today so this is what we are going to discuss today that uh, we have to there is a reason why our senses go out right and why our mind seeks pleasure in this world um so that is what we are going to look at today and look at some of the concepts as well through some analogies to drive home the point in fact i picked up a a test that was conducted at ucla to to basically pick up on or explain how a culture is grouped 
in any organization. And that concept is very deep. When you are going to look at it, it's a little hypnotic when you look at it. But once you pick up the pattern, you'll understand how it drives our behavior. And that can that concept can actually be extended or extrapolated to so many walks in life that we experience as well. So we'll get to that. But first, let's get started with what we did. We are going to do a quick recap of what we did yesterday. We looked at all these punchlines, right? All these brands, how they cash in on our uh, senses to get the share of our wallet and uh, give you a sense of, you know, if you don't do it, you'll miss out on something big. Fear of missing out, sense of belongingness, and a promise of happiness from all of these brands. You know, is it something that will give you happiness? And we are bombarded and assaulted by all of these messages throughout our day and throughout our lives. Okay, it could come from a thing, it could come from an object, and it could come from a person as well. Okay. Now, the whole idea is this basically enslaves our senses. Right? This is the enslavement of our senses where we go after these things, assuming that it is going to give us that aha that we have been craving for. Okay? Now, let's move on. So, let's talk about this concept of, now here's the person. Right? Now, you've got a spouse, right? Assuming it's a family man. Okay, um, no um, discrimination whatsoever to the bachelors, but I am telling people who expand their world. So that is why I picked up that example. Um, so let's say somebody who's actually neck deep into the world. Typically, this is how it would look like. Okay, you've got a spouse, then you've got a kid, and then you've got parents that you have hook, hooked to, then you've got friends we all have friends and then we have relatives extended families and then we have our corporate life as well right that's where we have a maybe a, if you're lucky you'll get a good boss some people say their boss is their mentor and they enjoy a very good relationship camaraderie with them and with their colleagues as well right now, if you look at each one of these, right, so if you look at each one of these, there is an implied, implied, okay, I'm saying implied, um, assumed promise of happiness from each one of these, right? It's almost like somebody said, come, come, I'll give you happiness. And on the other side, you were also saying, yeah, he says, I'm going to get happiness. Right? This promise is there in all the relationships that we forge in our lives. Right? Starting with our parents, to our immediate near and dear family. Right? Maharaj Bhajan says, Putra, Kalyatra. Basically with your son, wife, spouse, friends, relatives, friends, nephews, daughter, son. Right? We go for those marriages also. Um, so, so many relationships that keep on getting extended, basically, which have a relationship with our body. and the reason we forge any relationship is basically there is a promise. There is a promise like, and when I say promise, it's not like somebody has taken an oath on fire and say, you know what, I'm going to give you happiness. And if I will not do, give it to me, then uh, I will walk away from your life. No, that, that doesn't happen that way. So there's an implied happiness that we assume in that particular relationship. And that is why when we lose a particular relationship, we feel grief. Because our happiness, perceived happiness in that relationship has come to a halt or it has gotten obstructed. Okay. But there's a small problem with this promise here. Okay. And this promise is working both ways. That perceived happiness from those relationships, not only you are perceiving that, but the other person is perceiving as well. Because if the other person is not perceiving, that relationship will collapse. Okay. That is how worldly relationships are maintained. Now let's look at the limitation of this uh, concept here. So here's a beggar. Okay. It goes around and looks for another beggar and asks for money. 
right then it goes to another beggar and asks for money and another one asks for money another one asks for money and this chain continues basically okay now you may say so this beggar is repeatedly asking money from other beggars now if a beggar asks from a millionaire or a billionaire then it makes sense but if it continues to ask money from a beggar another beggar and this beggar gets disappointed is there merit to this particular expectation that this beggar had expectation that the other beggar is going to give him money and give him what he was looking for and if this beggar becomes upset because the other beggar was not able to give give it the money that it was looking for uh, what would you tell this beggar that is one part of it what are you going to tell this beggar anybody who it's like okay you you expected money from the other beggar and you didn't get that and now you are upset roaming around telling that story to everybody other beggars that you know i approached a beggar he couldn't give me money and that story continues throughout the world yes sunday you wanted to add something no sunday. i was answering your your uh, question like yes. he's stupid like the beggar is being stupid right stupid right so whenever i bring a story and we call stupid it yeah, typically it points to us only right yes aparna ji you wanted to say something Uh, yes i think he is looking in the wrong place actually yeah it's so now if i say this beggar did it for the first time okay so i would call it as ignorance maybe okay then this beggar continued this process now is it a mistake now it further continues is it carelessness further continues is it a choice what do you think beggar continues to do that you know one after another after another right some people they go on when they have some kind of a uh, what do you call breakdown of a relationship then uh, they move on and marry another one and then third one and then maybe th- fifth or sixth time lucky right so it just continues this process continues so what do you what do you think it's it's going on the phenomena that's going on ignorance is a choice is a carelessness it's mistake or maybe a mixture of all anybody who wants to take that ignorance um yes jagrut ji uh, you wanted to add something jagrut ji radhe radhe can you hear me i have to i did oh, yeah okay yeah, we can hear you now radhe radhe sorry i'm on my phone ha uh, but i was thinking um it is definitely like ignorance like what other option i have and sometimes we are also fooling ourselves we know that probably um the uh, the solution is not there but we keep on trying <clears throat> with different people and different situation try to change the variable and hope for a different outcome hope for the best right <clears throat> right yeah uh, yeah now scriptures are very clearly telling us that the material things objects uh or experiences are not going to satiate you we keep on doing that hit and trial without being entirely getting convinced that you know it, this is not where our purpose will get served so actually nobody in all fairness nobody has an ability to give others happiness we don't have that ability we are ourselves seeking for that perfect happiness we can give only what we have if my bank balance has only 100 rupees and somebody's demand is a billion rupees how can i give that so it's not there is a lack of intent there there's lack definitely not a lack of intent there we all have best intents when it comes to serving relationships around us it is just a limitation of who we are we are we are not satchid anand as we are not god realized as yet you know only person who is a billionaire with regards to happiness is either god or his saints nobody else have the ability to give us the happiness that we are seeking and we start seeking it from relations worldly relations that's a huge mistake that happens and then we get disappointed we get upset so many emotional upheavals we have to go through because somebody is not able to to um, 
meet our expectations even otherwise like swami ji beautifully explains our natures are is an interplay of gunas forget about giving happiness just meeting others expectations is statistically impossible because the play of gunas can have infinite combinations and let's say if you are lucky the persons that you are surrounded with they operate in the same guna as you do predominant guna let's say sattva even then the proportion could vary you may say you may want to sit for satsang for 10 hours other person will say 2 hours of sattva is enough now 8 hours and my other guna has become predominant there also you can have a conflict even despite having the same guna and similar kind of an intention to begin with so this expectation of extracting happiness from relationships actually is a being very naive it's like a beggar going out and asking another beggar for money that is the whole concept around it because from this world and one of the akatyanium or irrefutable principles of this material world is wherever you can mark this okay Mar- maharaj has given it very clearly wherever you think you are happy wherever you pin your happiness on in this material world the same thing is going to give you disappointment in long run okay that is a fact because the object person or the thing does not have that ability to give you the lasting happiness that you're looking for and that is a principle of this material world irrefutable principle a cartanium okay so now let's move on um anybody wanted to say anything all right now let's look at it i don't know where did this curve come from yeah anita ji you wanted to add something to be honest this whole thing is like a train journey uh, radhe radhe nitin ji radhe radhe anita ji uh, i wanted to add just uh, one point to this hmm. uh, like uh, in day to day life like uh, in uh, whatsapp we like uh, so many people we appreciate so many things so many things happens but in turn uh, if we expect that uh, others should do re- reciprocate the same thing that's a part of ignorance uh, on the part of us and also sometimes even if you miss uh, uh, acknowledging uh, other persons uh, messages or something they will take it in another way and uh, they don't even mind insulting you sure so you need to be careful every second thank you radhe radhe thank you uh, yes to see with the world we can never be very sure how much the other person reciprocates you or how much the other person loves you we can never be sure okay uh, you know whether you that person loves me more or this one first of all the true love is not possible in this world but even otherwise i mean if you if you say you know i do so much for this person and my feelings for that person are so strong and intense but the other person does not reciprocate we will always be second guessing but in case of god or in spiritual realm you know lord krishna has very clearly said that ye yatha mam prapadyante tasthat hai vibhajamyam only he has the ability to reciprocate you at the same time to the same extent in the same sentiment to the same person nobody else has so in this case how much god loves you if that question pops up in your head you simply have to ask yourself how much do i love god the same way god reciprocates if you do this much he does this much if you do this much he does this much so it's very simple about that but worldly relationships are maintained because of a, a delicate balance of credit and debits how many deposits you have made in a relationship and how many withdrawals you are doing as long as that balance is maintained worldly relationships sustain every relationship whether it's between a kid and parents whether it's between your own kids spouse friends that balance as long as it is maintained the relationship is sustained the moment that balance starts shifting in either direction friction will start coming in and when you start making more withdrawals than the deposits that you have done it will collapse you will have a fight and it will collapse this is how the worldly relationships are maintained yes pk ji you wanted to add something ji uh, there a few comment also read them first sure. she says Uh, kumar ji says this is definition of definition of insanity about the beggars definition and, of insanity yeah we all Honda are on is, insane trip for sure thank yeah. you kumar ji for and giving Honda the complete feeling about our lives 
as apology says it is similar to a story where swamiji explains a lady looking for the needle outside her house although she lost it inside the house yeah true sure let's uh, see i see preeti ji um, yesterday she didn't get a chance yes preeti ji please go ahead preeti ji radhe 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 i mean i heard swami ji's um lecture that no matter what the deep root of unhappiness is expectation so when we stop expecting anything back from other people and just do our duty then the the deep hurt that we feel um becomes lot lesson and tolerance is another way to feel elevated and so when we don't expect anything then obviously there is no unhappiness you know? and the reason we expect is if we go fundamental to the fundamental building block of that expectation is because we are not yet selfless i am doing it for you so that or because is always there that is what builds the expectation if we were truly selfless in any relationship like god is mm -hmm. that expectation will not be built right there was a husband and wife they had a big fight and the husband said today i am not going to have dinner i am going to go and sleep in my car and he goes and sleeps in his car in the meantime the wife's temper had cooled down so she took a water bottle for him that okay let me go and patch up with him and make up for you know all the quarrel and the big fight that we had now is she going selflessly let's check it out there's a bit of a test that is going to happen now now she goes there and offers that water bottle to that guy because her temper had cooled down but apparently that guy's temper had not cooled down he started blasting at her and when the moment he did that she was like hell with you i came to make up things with you and you are still behaving like that so that means she also had an expectation even though she was trying to make up for that because we don't have the ability to be selfless as yet we always go with some kind of an expectation and that expectation at the root of it it is unfair because two people having that kind of a, a temperament or the guna play of guna at the same time is impossible and we are not self selfless as yet right or if you are spiritually sufficiently evolved then we may take a step back and respond rather than react in those things but beautiful point pretty thank you for bringing that out yes shashi ji you wanted to add as well something radhi radhi nitin ji i just want to add little bit uh, i read it some place that maharaj ji said that you know god hided the happiness from this material world you know there is no happiness uh, can you hear me Yes, yes, we can hear you. Hello. Radhi, yes, yes, Radhi. we can hear you. Can you hear us? I think there's some technical problem at your end, Shashi ji. If you are new back, please let us know. So in the meantime, let's move on. Um, let's look at this uh, the relationship that the, which are formed. These relationships actually are very short-lived relationships, similar to how we have it in the world as well, right? In fact, you would see some of the biggest gossipers in train right in hindi they call kapuris they they know that when they are talking they are not going to meet each other and whatever they talk to each other they can get away with it yes shashi ji are you back now you wanted to say something yes uh, you know i read it that maharaj ji said god hide the happiness from this world you know he gave us a human body just to come to him but we being uh, under maya we are still getting attracted towards the material energy and hoping that we will find some happiness in there but there is no such thing happiness in this world so true. i just wanted to add this true so basically there is no happiness in this world and if we turn away from the world thinking there is no happiness there is only misery in this world even that is not the right attitude that is a falgu vairagya you are having because when we reach a position situation in our mind that there is neither happiness nor misery in this world and then turn towards god that is the true detachment not thinking there is no happiness there is only misery in this world there is neither happiness nor misery because this world is a veritable form of god it is perfectly the way it is meant to be and the maya being a subservient or the energy of god is actually gradually pushing us towards god only it will give you disappointments 
things will give you, the people will give you, the objects would give you disappointments just to reinforce the fact that this is not the right place. You are looking for the right thing at the wrong place. That is the message of the universe. Time and again, it will reinforce that. Now, relationships actually, if you look at it, I mean, I like this example where, um, you know, everybody's onboarded. They have a good talk. They forge some relations. Some of the biggest relationships are forged during a train travel. I love train travel. I've done it for, you know, four years when I was in college. So you talk about it, you know, I have five bungalows there. The other person will say, I am the chief minister's son's friend and this and that. All kind of gossips will happen there, right? Because they know they're not going to meet anywhere, any, anybody, um, you know, ever again. And then, but if you ask them, you know, we became such good friends. I gave you puri, you gave me barfi back. Now, why don't you... Why don't you accompany me when I'm getting down? They'll say, no, I have to go to another station. You said, no, how about you accompanying me to this station and give up where you are going? They will say, no, of course not. So this is a, this is basically a story of life where we come across all these people around us, where we start building expectations from them and start playing ghar ghar like we do. And uh, finally, everybody has to depart based on the exit ticket that they are carrying and the journey continues. Okay. And this is where we get hung up. This false promise of happiness that we build with each other and from people around, that is the cause of our misery. They are actually not, none of us, neither we are capable of giving others happiness, nor are they capable of giving us the true happiness that we are all seeking. Right? That is the first, uh, you know, the, the key concept because only saints who have attained that happiness have that bank balance which they can share, you know, the wealth that we are truly looking for. Now, let's look at this. Uh, you may have to watch it a couple of times. I'm going to play it. Um, give me a sec. Uh, I'm going to stop share and play it again so that you can sh hear the audio as well. Share sound. Are you able to see it now? I'm going to play yes, it again. Can, yes. Okay, just watch it carefully and let me know what you are observing. Okay. Do you want to see it again or you got it? It is a bit hypnotic, right? I mean, you keep watching it. It may drive you to some kind of a hypnosis, but what is the key learning for you after seeing this spontaneous phenomena that is that unfold in front of you? Anybody? Well, we have plenty of hazards. Mm -hmm. uh... See, it's, it, there are so many... <laughs> deep insights you get from it. So I would like to have a bit of a discussion before I move further on this one. Yes, yeah. please go ahead. Samji, Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. I look like uh, in this shaky world, um, they were not in, in the sink. And after a while, I think somehow medically or whatever they decided, they 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 became in sync at the end of that one. Everything was in sync for a while at least. Who knows in the future? So they were not in sync in the beginning. That's like in that shell, I would say. Yes, that's a good observation. Thank you, Samji. Let's hear from others as well. Samji, Radhe Radhe. With Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Uh, in, yeah, in the beginning, they were not in sync. Uh, at least, uh, yeah, like only two or three are in sync. But in time, they became synchronous. So, yes. is it like, should we give time or tolerate and give time? No, see, it's like this. Basically, this goes on to illustrate the culture of a particular place. So, uh, I would like to hear maybe one more hand and then I'll get a little deeper into this concept. I mean, there's so many things we can derive from this concept. So, I want, want to see what other things you are able to pick up from this. 
So there are a few comments to read them. The comments. Yeah, sure. Uh, Kumar Ji says, time is ticking away and we are not moving towards our destination. And HG is saying, each of us have to rotate on our journey separately, but linked to each, each other. Mm -hmm. and yeah, Uday I think Kumar that's Ji, all agreed. Yeah, Uday Kumar Ji says, with this experiment, world is an illusion. Okay, now our, our flight, uh, imagination is taking flight now on this one. Yeah, I'll get to that. Let's hear maybe a couple of other hands. Rade, Rade. Uh, Rade, Rade. I wanted to say that uh, the way uh, each one is sticking, it is keeping the whole thing on balance. If you see uh, that slab, it's it just on two uh, uh, rolling bottles kind of a thing. If one starts going on its own some way, the whole system goes of, out of balance. So we are all contributing to the system in balance and we have to serve the whole uh, system we can't think of serving uh, ourselves and and if the system is in place then we are in place the other way also applies the system contributes to us and we contribute to the system true coincidentally we are talking about senses five senses and there are five of these as well okay that's another thing i observed when i was looking at it as well very nice thank you shirama yes sandhya arunji you want to go ahead arunji wish... arunji yes you had the comment arunji Actually, I commented on something else, but okay. You can hear me, Arunji? We can't hear you, Arunji. We are not able to hear you. So we'll come back to you again then. Okay. Yeah. Sandhya, Radhe Radhe. Um, yeah, Radhe Radhe. I mean, I was seeing it in this way that initially we might try to seek happiness from different places, but ultimately there is only one way by which we can get happiness. So that kind of to me represented synchrony and that can also happen through good association so satsang is what i was seeing here so. that is cool i mean you said the word that i wanted to hear so far very nice okay let me build on that let's quickly hear from ashishi because i think it's the first time he's raised his hand so um, yeah. or maybe you have done he has done the comment he did it mm -hmm. quickly said, in isolation we cannot see the thing but in a group we see the thing after a while all others impress with each other. So, satsang are important. Arunji says... Beautiful similar. point. Yeah. Very true. Great point. Yes, Ashishi, you wanted to add something? Ashishi, Rajiv, Rajiv. So, I think it's like a thing. We can't hear you. Very feeble. Maybe if you want to. Ashishi, can you hear us? Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes now you're audible. Uh -huh. So, uh, I'm seeing it as a chain reaction, like, uh, you know, that uh, whenever we get one desire, it leads to the another desire and it continues. So, I think it's like yes. a chain reaction. Yeah. So, there's no right or wrong answer in this one. But the key thing here is, like you said, right, If you, one of the things can actually bring other things in harmony here. So, if you're in a satsang, let's say you are the odd one out. You are the one which is going in the other direction. Other things will pull you or, or harmonize you over time. And unfortunately, same is the same is uh, the effect of a kusang as well. Okay, so the the culture aspect of it, where you spend basically the five people you are hanging out with, or the satsang or the kusang, it will actually tilt your direction unless you start speaking their language only. And same thing starts going for senses as well. Yesterday, Swamiji said that we need to dovetail our senses, right? When we start giving it a higher taste, even if you have started giving it to one of your senses, although bhakti, there are tridha bhakti, you know, you speak, you chant, you hear, and you think, remember as well, right? Chant, remember, and hear. But if you start giving it the taste, even to your one of the senses, the other will also start harmonizing. That is the power of this thing. So uh, it said that, you know, you become the sum average of five people you generally hang around with. The satsang is the best thing we can do. You will start speaking their language. You will start talking like that. You will start behaving like them. You will start uh, resonating with their thought process. This is how infectious it can be. And unfortunately, Kusang can have the just the opposite effect. You know, you spend a little bit of time with Kusang friends and, you know, your thought process will start going for a toss as well. So... If you and even in the you know when you start working or you're doing seva or something like that, 
initially there may be cut part right if you look at it they are not truly they are at logger heads with each other that is called the uh, forming stage or the norming stage or the storming stage but when you truly start performing with god and guru you are all in sync perfect harmony at that point and it it this is an evolution that happens through all the stages so there are so many things we can learn from this the point here is whatever association you are in and over time things get harmonized provided you are giving more of it and you are in close influence of those things so it's a very important principle and this was a test conducted by ucla but i i found so many connotations or so many things uh, you know that would you can actually derive from this very simple experiment okay now any announcements you wanted to make before i move further i wanted to touch upon a concept of this beautiful quotation i came from i think urvi shared it probably so with regards to the experiences are our life right there are different emotions that we deal with right? and then there is a lesson around that as well so if you think about it everything is actually teaching us something as this quotation says the annoyance is actually teaching us patience the sense of abandonment that you may feel it is actually telling you to stand up on your feet people feel lonely somebody abandoned them somebody threatens to abandon them that means the lesson is think of standing on your feet rather than becoming insecure around it if you're getting annoyed time and again that means you need to raise your game with regards to your patience okay the third one is if you are actually getting anger you of course the lesson there is to learn forgiveness and compassion approach it with love if somebody is taking your mind space there are people who will take your mind space or exert their power over you as if you were born to serve them other than god and guru of course they will not they will do it very very compassionately knowing what you need but if somebody starts doing that and you feel it is happening to you repeatedly that means it's about time to take that power back god wants us to learn that it's a very important lesson because if you don't do that today it's one person tomorrow it could be somebody else third day it will be somebody else and your whole life will be simply playing dancing to the tune of somebody because you are you don't have the ability to take the power back in your control right it's only god and guru who we should be serving with blind faith not people just for the sake of it right i mean of course we have to be very prudent about that hate means when you have an emotion of hate it means unconditional love is what is the lesson around it when you are fearful all the times the lesson is to overcome that fear and when you have lack of control that means let go and add d to that let go and let god so i came across thank you urvi for sharing that i i just found it very very beautiful okay with that uh, we'll give it for the announcements um, that we have for today and then i would go back and touch upon a few other things on the topics that we are discussing and have a quick discussion on that as well so over to you sham ji and are there for any announcements that you want to make yes mai i have posted the numbers on the chat window and okay. i have one more thing i want to share ki aap hum sab ko ye kehna cha rahe hain ki hum jahan is group mein hai aaj sab 100 ke log ke aas paas we on the right track and the fast track so we all in sync is that clear to all of us <laughs> very true we all are in <laughs> all are in sync leading so the right track and the fast track mm-hmm. and thank you so much for putting us all in sync yeah. and i It's have posted, great yeah what to be are you able to see me somehow my screen has gone yeah. for a toss no, we can see you we can hear you it's fine all okay. good all clear okay so i don't know what has happened but we can see sure. you yes and i have posted all the uh, uh on the chat window the announcements somaji store is already on in india he is in chennai from december 7th till 9th in hyderabad from december 10 till 14th in bangalore from 16 to 18 december and banara has a annual shiver starting from 25 december till 31st the best time to start your christmas and end with new year and then we have uh, the sanskriti event happening in dallas in person so it's online uh, uh, has started uh, the contest is for all the people it's for 
kids as well as for adults. We also have an early bird discount starting if you register early till December 5th December. And then uh, regular events are there. Please join our community, daily community portal if you have not joined so far. Join our WhatsApp group. Anything else, Sandhya? Are you there? Any announcement you want to make, Sandhya? I guess that's it. Nothing more. Written by okay. Anything? I missed out. Great. So we are coming off. I hope you have looked at all the wonderful videos that have come out from the Gita summit that we had. Please do help spread the word. It was a wonderful, wonderful session. Uh, one of the things that stuck with me um, was the FIR concept. You know, we file FIR in India. Okay. But that FIR concept uh, was very nice. Um, that was provided that one of the yardsticks for our spiritual growth is to see the frequency, intensity, and the recovery time should decrease over time for your anger and, and all the other negative emotion. The frequency of it happening, the intensity of it happening, and the recovery time from that. If it is increasing, that means you're making spiritual progress. And if it is not, that means some course correction needs to be done. I love that part. There are too many takeaways I had. Maybe I'll keep on bringing it in our sessions from time to time, uh, but it was it was a very um, enriching experience to get to hear so many uh, spiritual leaders and uh, check out the videos and Swamiji's speech and Netai Sevani Mataji. So many good speakers came in there and helped spread the word around for that. And Swamiji's India tour is there. If you have not registered for one of his retreats, then uh, please do so because that's the best thing you can do to yourself or best gift you can give to yourself. I always say that see these sessions and what we do is is the seva enabled to us even though we we are not entitled right for the seva only because of grace of Swamiji and Maharajji. So this is a good foot in the door with regards to your spirituality. Taking it to the next level would happen only when you meet Swamiji in person or start building a personal connect with him. Either through the, the SMX session or through daily sadhanas or by making out time to meet him when he comes on US here or in India. So that's that would be the next logical step, I would say, if, you, if you're really serious about your spiritual journey and, and, and want to take it to the next level. Okay, anything else? Um, if I not, totally then... Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I totally back it. Please meet Swamiji once, whether in India or US, it's it's the lifetime, achieve, uh, achievement. lifetime achievement for all of us. If we can do that, any which way. Thank you so much. Yes. yes. Okay. Anybody who had any observation or things they wanted to share about this concept of a beggar asking money from another beggar? But I found this, this concept very this was a, a very uh, beautiful way of explaining us. Hum sab bhikari hai, hum sab jante hai, but aapne isko itne achche se explain kari na in a sugar coated way ki hume ehsas nahi hua ki humari bezati ho rahi hai ya humari tarik ho rahi hai. But it is, this is, I guess, this is we the way we behave. हम लोग ढूंढते हैं अपनी अपनी कमियां अपनी इच्छाएं अपनी चीजें आसपास में आपस में जानते हुए कि वो हमें नहीं दे पाएंगे बस स्टिल और आपने इसको इतने अच्छे से एक्सप्लेन किया है हम सब भिकारियों को तमीज से प्यार से कि हमें बिल्कुल भी इसका एहसास नहीं हुआ हमें चुभा नहीं है थैंक यू सो मच धन्यवाद द प्लेजर इज एंटायरली माइंड इट्स ऑलवेज अ प्लेजर व्हेन आई हियर दैट you know the examples that i bring in it it basically talks about an insane or a stupid person <laughs> that is the whole idea right that's yeah. the story of my life at least so True see that. we may have some atmas here so no offense <laughs> right but yeah. majority of the people they fall in this category and <laughs> that's why i love these examples that swami ji and maharaj ji gives us right it just makes the point very clear yes it just hits us at the right right spot and it's up for us to take it from there further how we take our life for it's meant to hit us and shake us out of our comfort zone that's the good idea yeah thank you so much bhai i'll take few hands now swati ji no radhe radhe yeah radhe radhe i think this beggar when he's asking the other one doesn't have what will he give because when we don't have we cannot give it to anybody oh. and he should think that after asking five to six times he should stop asking because he is going in wrong direction at least he should think that that it is not there then why should i keep asking even then i know he, they are not able to give till he is going to another beggar than another beggar 
सो समवेयर द चेन शुड ही शुड ब्रेक द चेन एंड थिंक ओवर इट दैट यहां पे नहीं है कहीं और ढूंढना चाहिए थैंक यू राधे राधे वी वी आर सीरियल आस्करस सीरियल बेगर सो दैट इज हु वी आर एंड वी डोंट नो एनीथिंग अदर देन बेगिंग and that's what we do when we go to temple also right we beg we want god care of god right no, sorry world care of god even then we are begging so but yeah that is a fact of our lives for sure yes uh, jyoti ji jyoti ji let's yeah. and then we can rate rate um my perspective on this is the fact that um you you talked about beggars but um, we are all blind and we are all looking for the path to god and we are all asking each other the path for it um the other aspect also is that you know maya dhin we are all under the triguni maya um and nobody can release us except for the maya dhish bhagwan and we are all puppets are under the influence of the triguni maya so your your um ex- uh, examples are always very very interesting so thank you mithun ji for bringing that but these are the things that triggered these in my mind radhe radhe jyoti ji thank you yes they are examples they come directly from swami ji and maharaj ji right that is why i love and whenever i come across an example i just immediately note it down that okay gives me an opportunity to bring it to life you know on a slide because they are very hard hitting and they just drive home the point immediately thank you let's hear from uh, others as well so we still have zade zade yeah we have, have some time yeah before the next session so yes i think we can take few more hands aparna ji can you hear me uh, hello radhe radhe uh, nitin ji as you said i think it- this beggar is looking for the right thing but in the wrong place like uh, swami ji has one story that a uh, old woman is looking for a needle outside her home and someone asks her what are you looking for i am looking for the needle here and uh, he asks her like where did you lose it i lost it inside the house but she is looking hmm. outside yeah we are looking for the right thing absolutely right but at the wrong place mm-hmm. like sometimes people ask me the question about which event right can i ask it's the right question to a wrong person so same way we are looking for the right thing but at the wrong place very true yes uh, rahul go ahead rahul good to see you back and kumar ji you can add another joke okay because you'll get time yes rahul go ahead radhe radhe in our sankirtan madhuri uh, in one of the vandanas There are two lines. सबे बेगारी जगत के जेतिक नातेदार दिव्य प्रेम आनंद के तुम एक साहूकार. Very true. Like summarizes here. Yeah. We are all beggars and have been begging from the other beggars in this world, hoping that they will give us that happiness that we have been seeking always, right? So that needs that understanding needs to be corrected. Nobody can give us that. You know, whether we seek it through some forging some relationships, getting married. acquiring some house whatever we do nobody can actually get that happiness because the place itself is right our scriptures say that you can tulsi das ji said you can grow grass on top of a tortoise shell or you can extract oil out of sand or you can pass a camel out of the needle of an eye but extracting happiness from this world it's just not possible that is the atishyukti or exaggeration he did to drive home this point in ramayan tulsi das ji uh, yes uh, jagrut ji or yes jagrut ji yeah yeah just wanted to add nidin ji ki i think one of the things is also we get impressed by um, the people or uh, like you were saying yesterday of the advertising so we look at people maybe we see their clothes or the position the title or their influence in the world and we somehow you know we lose the judgment and and start thinking oh yeah they will be the savior or we should be like them and then True. we fall into that trap so shielding ourselves with the right knowledge is very important and consciously to be done and that's the hard part i think very true so this is the irony of this world you look at somebody and you think they have this thing it could be money power fame whatever and they are happy you go ask that person 
he says you know what i don't i'm not happy but i know somebody who's happy he's looking at somebody else you go to that person he'll say i'm not happy but i know somebody who's happy and that is the paradox or the irony of life actually nobody is all the way up to indra who is the celestial king even he's unhappy because he's he's after the post of brahma so our scriptures tell us all the way up to brahma lok the happiness we haven't even gotten the the happiness in this material world if we were young we had everything in this world healthy favorable subjects all the knowledge beautiful looking then it's one unit of happiness and you keep multiplying it all the way up to brahma lok that happiness keeps on increasing and even that is imperfect you will still be where you are right now right if i ask any one of you how many of you have exceeded all the goals that you had set up when you were in school have you exceeded or met that i think at least i am i have far exceeded those goals am i more happier but that is i mean if you think deeply enough your life will tell you you know you are at the wrong place what what you're trying to seek is not something you can get here okay so good discussion we still have 4 minutes so we can quickly take couple of more hands yeah we have few chat comments also hetal ji says our soul has attributed with happiness and we are seeking happiness outside yeah. and jyoti ji says data ek ram bhikari sari duniya ram ek devta pujari sari duniya one uh, she said i'm i'm singing it for a change so thank you so much jyoti ji for the entire uh, bhajan okay you did the bhajan devotional segment as well sham ji very nice yeah, yeah, because we are short of time the comment today thank you so Wonderful. much and kripa ji says just like we are unable to get out of worldly maya this beggar is unable to step outside his beggar world so true that's how right. we all are yes all right kumar ji you have the last maybe last but one word because we have another session in 3 minutes so sure. kumar ji uh, radhe radhe nitin ji radhe radhe sham ji and everyone else so yeah that was the first comment which i made basically the definition of insanity is keeping doing the same thing and expecting different results right so we are trying to get the true happiness while no one else has it and then we are begging each other person to give it to us that's very it true. very true very true and that now at least hopefully it will help us see things in perspective when we get disappointed from others when we get disappointed from relationships you know they just don't have the ability you are struggling they are struggling too that's that's as simple as that you may think they are happy nobody is and especially if they are angry they are upset they need more compassion and more love than you do okay so everybody is struggling here in this world that is how we need to look at it as opposed to getting upset um, and then that prayer um, you know that uh, thing which we had sent that is also very profound based on the situation you are in just figure out the lesson around that that is the most important thing yes, that so was a beautiful to- slide uh, nitin ji Yes, uh, if you want to take that, that, I can do that. Share it again because it's a very important one. I got it. I got. One. You I may got want to snapshot of this because this something you can hang on your walls. You know because it's it has profound lessons in it. Okay. Yes, Surya Prakashi, real quick. Surya Prakashi, Radhe Radhe. Um, if some let us say if somebody wanted in uh, maybe a money and all if uh, if he ask his friend or his colleague he may say that uh, you are asking again a beggar asking another beggar. Yeah, that will be a practical joke. Very nice. Thank you very much for that. So please fill out the feedback tracker. Still have one twenty seconds. Uh, that's a lot of time for you to fill in, Radhe Radhe at least. so thank you everybody you can stay back for the next session we have a wonderful book club coming up and i look forward to seeing you tomorrow we will continue on this journey we will talk about some more concepts um, you know how do we look at controlling our senses and perspective give it higher taste it's going to the journey is going to get more fascinating as we come to the close of chapter 2 then we will do the karam vikaram concepts chapter 3 before we resume our journey on chapter 4 believe it or not two years and we are still on chapter 4 but seems like you know we have gone through bhagavad gita multiple times back and forth uh, but yeah that is how we will do and it's a little different way of doing it but i'm i'm sure you are finding it meaningful and enriching because we are not limiting it to one shloka but you know trying to cover the length and breadth of the entire bhagavad gita as as the opportunity presents with that we come to the end of today's session over to you ajay uh, and sunil bhai thank you uh, radhe radhe thank you all of all of you